Old Redditors who never found the one, what is your life like? 61. Never married, no kids, no debt, retired and loving it, no current GF but that works out since it's prime fishing weather here in Vermont. I get no crap for spending the day on the boat fishing. Respect. I'll be 50 in August. Been single for 16 years. I found the one, but I lost her. I work a lot. I am very involved in my work. I spend a lot of fun time with my kids. And I don't get into relationships. I am not going to lie. It's not great. Most days are really, really depressing. Go to work. Go to the gym. Go home. Sleep. Repeat. Even if I didn't find the one, at least finding someone now and then would have made things better. But I guess it wasn't meant for me. Turning 40 soon. I miss being single when I am in a relationship but miss being in a relationship when I am single. I asked a girl out today and got rejected. Naturally, it feels pretty stink but there is a genuine part of me that feels relief that I, well, she did I suppose, have saved myself from a lot of drama that follows being in a relationship. Trust me brother, asking a girl out and getting rejected is much better than the regret of never asking. But now it's off your chest and ready to move on. Let's see, I'm 50 and live alone so I expect I am qualified to answer. Pros, I have a good job where I work with a lot of people I like. I travel for business, more than I want, so get to go to a lot of interesting places. I moved recently to be closer to brother's family. I get to spend time with his kids when I want. A 65 inch TV, two cars, cleaning lady comes once a month, healthy bank account, cons, not much sex. Women in my age group don't really attract me, and I'm not the type to go larking after the young uns. Conclusion. I'm sitting in my underwear, reading Reddit, and will go sailing this afternoon. The conclusion cracked me up. I'm sitting in my underwear, reading Reddit too but I'm not single and I will be watching Netflix all day. 52 here. Single for the last 30 years. Married young. Had a kid. Wife was 13 years older than me, left me for someone her own age who made lots of money, would do it all over again in a heartbeat, love my kid, love my ex and her husband, but to the question, what's it like, it's great, I worry about myself, and only myself, I have a nice house, an interesting job, and the ability to devote myself fully to my hobbies, theater and music, I make my own schedule, play video games to completion if I want, write songs and am able to devote a lot of time to things that interest me, everything in the house is where I left it, I do have a dog, who is, I am convinced, the best dog ever, there are some downsides, I have to work to get sex, but NSA is fine for me, I have to do all the chores, and deal with feeding myself, it is often assumed, since I am single, that I have more availability than others for pretty much anything, Sometimes I envy my partnered friends, but this passes quickly when I realize that no one is whining at me to do something or be different. It might have made me a little bit selfish, but probably not. I help out friends a lot. I can. I worry about dying alone sometimes, but end we all do. What makes it work is to get out of the house and be responsible for making things happen. In my case this is theater, but it can be any social situation. I meet a lot of folks and commit to a lot of things. Too many sometimes, but it helps me to appreciate the occasional quiet evenings at home streaming something on Netflix. I cannot stand the idea of becoming the kind of person whose normal evening consists of deciding what to watch on TV. For me, it is a treat. I overcommit and am tired a lot. Conversely I think I accomplish a lot. Am I sometimes lonely? Yep. Holidays used to be hard, especially when my kid was younger, but now, because I am lucky, we holiday together, I have a lot of other friends, some single, others married, and we have a quite nice extend family, tl, dr, a, not too bad, biggest downside, when I scream make me a sandwich I have to then get up and make it, I still end up with one though. It's not terrible, I am in my early 50s, never married, no kids, I own a small house, which keep me busy, where I live alone with two cats, not quite the crazy cat lady, I got burned out on my job and, because I have no kids, 
I can afford to live on part time income, which I do. I have several groups of friends and I am very active in two hobbies. As a result, I go out almost every night. I am only lonely around the holidays, when all activities surrounding my hobbies are cancelled and my friend all go to see their families. So, besides December, my life is pretty good. I occasionally date, but it never goes anywhere. I don't actually need a man, since I am financially secure and I won't be having children. So I spend time with a man only if I want to, which means he has to be pretty special to get me to upset my routine and skip time with my friends. Mid 40s, never married, no kids, lost the one twice, the first was complicated, the second was cancer, I haven't given up hope, yet, my problem is I'm looking for a girl who's one in a million in a town of about 250,000, uh, that means you have a 22.2% chance, I'd take those odds, seriously, p equals 1.999999 circumflex 250,000, 1.778, go for it, I believe in you. I don't really think I'm old old, but in my mid 30s, happy, I do what I want when I want, I date when I want, all in all, I have a very fulfilling life. 37 year old here, starting to get lonely sometimes as my friends are all married and get busy with their family affairs. Dating is also hard because it's not that easy to find single women in appropriate age category. Sorry about the wall of text, I am 51, male and living by myself. It seems that every time I have tried to find the right one, things always turned awry. Either I had flaws or she they did. I am handicapped by the fact that I chose to spend a great deal of my life taking care of my old, sick mom. Apparently or perhaps obviously, that sort of makes me pariah in terms of living with someone because it spells mother issues. And I won't deny that I have issues. In terms of the woman I have chosen to date and subsequently live with, have in a sense been wrong for me. Wrong because I chose them from my low standards originating from a very low self esteem. So, at the moment I am living alone, I came to the conclusion that perhaps that is my destiny in life. Even though it may seem lonely, as it did for me in the beginning, there are perks. I don't have to answer to anyone. I can do what I like. I never have to worry about living up to someone's idea of standards. If I choose to spend the entire day watching YouTube and doing coding, it is my choice and no one else's business. So there it is. For the young guys worrying about finding the one. There are billions of people. Odds are the one isn't in your hometown. But that's okay. I remember worrying about finding the one girl that's right for me. Or accidentally losing her. Or never meeting her etc. But the best piece of advice I got about that was, stop trying to find a girl to be your everything. Can you imagine the odds of finding a girl who likes all of your hobbies, matches you with all of your beliefs, lives close to you, and on top of all that, in a point of her life where she's ready to date you? Instead of looking for someone to match you perfectly, find good friends that match chunks of you. Hang out with one group that loves playing video games. Find local groups that like your same hobby, go to sports bars with some friends who love the same team you do, or just learn to enjoy some things in your life that require solitude. Diversify your life, and be a whole person instead of trying to find someone to complete you. Find someone who compliments you, instead. Stop trying to find a girl to be your everything. Thank you for spreading this advice. Eventually that girl will let the boy down when she can't exactly what he wants her to be. And they will both be unhappy. I don't know really what it's like. I've spent most of my life living in the same community. Working the same job more or less. Truth be told, when I got to an age where I realized that I hadn't met anyone I truly connected with, I didn't mind. I just stopped caring and it's not a concern of mine. Soon after I took up writing and spend quite a bit of my time crafting stories. It's a modest existence, but a fulfilling one. Not very old, but I live alone with a bank account that gets bigger every week. I prefer my friends to any of my past relationships. I love kids, but I don't want kids living with me. I love sex, but I don't relish the thought of living with that person. I rent a house at a very reasonable rate per month and have a full spare bedroom and bathroom in case friends of mine need a place to crash. I keep a full liquor cabinet for anyone that wants to come over even though I don't drink. 
I am acquiring a lot of furniture so that my living room can see plus 6 people comfortably. And I do it all because while I am the only person that lives in my house. Well, simply put, I'm not alone. And I never was. My brother. Mid 40s. Been single for 15 plus years. And I freaking love it. I can't think of anything better than to live my life in my way. It helps that I'm on the far end of the introvert scale. I have a few very close friends, and my extended family, and that's apparently enough to meet my emotional needs. I would make a lousy romantic partner for pretty much anyone. What? You want to spend time together again? But I just saw you last week. I like this because I am also love my time too much. I'm a 39 year old woman. Spent the last 5 years single after a couple of full on abusive relationships. Changed my focus and changed my perception of relationships. Met a dude that I wasn't sure about to start off with. Gave him a chance and it's the best. Most fulfilling. Equal. Peaceful relationship I have ever had. There is no one and there is no shame in being single. Open minds at all times. I'm 40 years old and single. I'm never had an intimate relationship. I was a typical nice guy throughout high school and college. For years after, I was very bitter and invariably looked outside of myself to assign the blame. I was a continual pity party. During a year spent driving tractor trailers across the country, I learned that I am the source of all my problems. It was always me keeping me single and miserable. I was a very crappy person. Realizing that, I changed my attitude. I stopped blaming others for my personal flaws and I own my misery. After some deep, solitary soul searching on the ice choked highways of the nation last winter, I came back home to care for my sick mother. I have decided that the experimental payload of my fricked up life is more than I would ever dare to inflict on another person. I am so completely ill equipped to be in any sort of intimate relationship. I have a couple of good friends, a family I love deeply and plenty of acquaintances and work associates I appreciate. It is enough for me. I am now happily single and plan on staying that way. I own my own home and have my mother living with me. I have a simple, humble job driving school buses and I'm a volunteer firefighter. I like to camp with my brother and his kids. Just bought a kayak. This summer I'm taking my mother to fill a bit of her bucket list. Acadia National Park. Here we come. I probably don't count as old, just turned 30, and this probably won't be read by anyone, but I'm a bachelorette who doesn't believe in the one and I honestly really like my life. I like getting to decorate my apartment as girly as I want it, and it's always a peaceful little retreat to come home to after work. I have fewer things to balance and can focus more on work, or the gym, or whatever hobby I'm into at the moment. I grew up in a pretty emotionally volatile household. So I'd rather be really selective about who I date and let into my life than have a new boyfriend every month and always be caught up in breakups in the dating scene. Which I find pretty exhausting. I expect the dating scene in my 30s to be a little less volatile and don't feel that I missed out on dating more in my 20s anyways. I have fur babies. And if I ever don't have kids I don't think it'll be a big deal. I'm into rescuing and spoiling dogs and cats anyways. And I love them to bits. I've dated a lot of nice guys and at one point lived with a long term boyfriend, but I really enjoy my independence and solitude, and I'm not willing to give that up for just anyone. The cons are that there are a lot of activities built for two people. I feel a little like I'm not a real person yet when my friends and co-workers talk about marriage and kids, and not having someone to split the bills with or help take care of you when you're sick can be very difficult. But overall I'm really happy with my life. And I don't feel bad about being single until other people make me feel bad about it. There's a lot of people in their 30s in this thread commenting like there's no chance they'll ever meet anyone ever again. I'm in my mid 30s too and I had no idea that I was so worthless and used up. Seems like I've been traipsing around for years. Oblivious to the fact that I've nothing to look forward to but crushing loneliness and despair for the rest of my days. How embarrassing. I suppose the upside to it all is that now I know I'm officially off the market I don't need to waste time and effort on silly things like exercise and personal hygiene. I can spend the rest of my miserable life eating pizza and watching Netflix. 
I might even get 4 or 5 cats. It's been a real eye opener. Coming here. I can't imagine what people must have thought when they realized I was in my 30s and not married, with no kids, and carrying on like I wasn't weird and broken and delusional. Ed. I'm being facetious. I thought it was fairly obvious but a nice Scandinavian just offered me what seemed like earnest advice so it appears I might need a sarcasm tag after all. Here it is. S. Sigh. There is no one. Life is made of compromises, and if you don't compromise, that itself will compromise your life. You don't know what will fulfill you. It's not your so's job to fulfill you anyway. Divorced after 16 years, it was no surprise. My kids like my new girlfriend, and she seems to connect better with them than their mother. The girlfriend isn't perfect, but neither am I, and I love her. She says she loves me and she hasn't kicked me out of the house. Yet, the crappy parts of my life are all my own doing anyway, and always have been. I don't suffer under illusions that finding the right one will somehow make me happy. Finding her alleviated a lot of issues, but they were all issues related to having and so. Life is what you make it. You will be happy, or unhappy, and all you can do about it is at your fingertips. Nobody else's. 40. Computer Programmer. I'll focus on the question and not the why I am alone. I try to be constructive in my life and not waste too much time on entertainment or laziness. So mainly my time is spent on work, study or a project. However, when I'm procrastinating or want some distraction I'll go to Reddit, TV shows movie or video games. Seems like normal stuff to me. I don't go out or have friends to spend time with. House cleaning is kept to what's required only. I would like to travel more but I don't see it being that much fun on my own. Social interactions are not for me so group travels are out of the question. Happy? No not really but at the moment not miserable either. There are times that it all seems meaningless or that I failed at everything. Found the one when I was young. We grew up together. But then we went our separate ways and now I look back to those days in complete disarray. Let me guess, you're now 23. All my life I have been looking for the one. Mostly I have even believed even I could be the one. So far I have not found the one even of my thorough efforts traveling the lands and I admit at times I get discouraged. My life is full of work, training and educating myself. Man of the world so to speak. I don't complain, but if I ever find the possible one, I promise to do everything in my power to decapitate him her because after all, who wants to live forever? There can only be one. 44 year old here who didn't do too well with dating. Found a couple of potentials. But when I got to 35 with such minor success. Had 6 weeks total of anything worth calling a relationship. I gave up. It was pretty hard for a while. Loneliness would come back and bite from time to time. But in my early 40s I think I came to a newer appreciation of everything else in life. Now. Being alone isn't the hurt it once was. It's more like it'd be nice if it wasn't the case but not much more so than wishing my bung knee wouldn't go out in opportune moments. Or wishing I never got migraines. I'm 50 and been single for the past 4, 1 stroke 2, ish, years. I haven't had a date or sex or any non-friend human contact in almost 3 years. I have never found the one. I have, and I apologize if there are people on Reddit who know me who have dated me and read this. Never dated someone I've had more than a passing interest in. Initially, I grew into them over time. I dated to avoid being alone. I dated because they liked me, not necessarily the other way around. I've never dated someone whom I believed was the one, and more shallow lie. I've never looked at the person I'm dating and thought to myself oh my god. This person is so hot and perfect and amazing how did I manage to end up with them? I spent the better part of my young adult life passing people over because there was something less than perfect about them. I didn't like their clothes. I didn't like their haircut. I didn't like the shape of their body. They seem too clingy. They seem disinterested. They commit too quickly or too slowly. There was always a reason why I couldn't stay with them. And now I'm alone. I don't care about meeting the one anymore. I just want to meet someone nice who I find physically and emotionally attractive who I can wake up with on a weekend morning and read the paper with. And just skip the whole dating bulls thing altogether. The longer I am single the more daunting the thought of dating is. I just became comfortable being unhappy in my daily routine. 
Sure I try apps and small talk but I have accepted my situation. Sometimes dreams just don't come true. I lost my one too. I try not to think about it if I don't have to. Just makes me feel worse. Trying to focus on work instead. I'm 40. Three relationships. One child. Last relationship was abusive and left me with PTSD. I've worked hard to try and minimize that and developed a new career in which I'm relatively successful but not rich. Were I in a relationship, I probably wouldn't have tried for the career. So that's definitely a positive. But whether it's a combination of age, having a child, low key, or how I look kinda cute but chubby. Guys really aren't interested in me. I don't really get picked up. Not common where I live, let alone asked out. I find it lonely and sad. When things are hard, you crave softness or at least what I remember that softness was like. I'm at the point where I don't think I'll meet anyone and quite frankly, it makes me incredibly sad. I really miss love. Some thoughts on this, as it's been on my mind lately. I'm 37, never married, not over the hill, but getting to the point of wondering if I'm going to find a life partner. Sometimes I think I'd be happier alone. I wonder how much my desire for a partner is societal pressure versus a natural inner drive. Probably some of both. I'm happiest when I'm not worrying about finding someone. I have total independence and control over how I spend my time. I'm not responsible for another person's needs. I've had far more time in my life than other my age to meet, date, sleep with and intimately know a variety of people. I've also had time to think, to feel and really delve into and understand myself on a deeper level. I learn by being with others, but I also learn by being alone. I think both have been highly necessary, at least for me. It's taken me until now to realize that I'll lose myself in relationships. By default I throw myself into meeting every need of a partner instead of my own. With this knowledge, and a growing understanding of my needs, I'm maybe, finally heading towards being genuinely ready for a long term, even lifelong partnership. It'll still take a lot of practice yo. As an older editor I am looking forward to finding the one. I did the whole marry a hot cheerleader route and regretted it ever since. If it were not for my two boys I would have been out sooner that is for sure. Brains trump looks any day, though it took me a long time to realize that. Arizona has a crappy law that says you have to wait two months before your divorce can be finalized. The 15th of July cannot get here fast enough. Then I am off to find the one, perhaps at Comic Con. The comments here give me hope. I see a lot of sad comments and I just want to tell everyone. It's never too late. Seriously. My aunt always cared about her career more than anything her entire life. At 46 she was still alone. Making incredible amounts of money but lonely. Of course she enjoyed her life though. She traveled everywhere. Ate at the best places. Got good cars etc. One day she had to go to Spain because of a work assignment. On the plane she ended up sitting next to this 55 year old Italian guy that was going to Spain for work also and who had been divorced for a long time. They hit it off on the plane. Ended up meeting up in Spain. And today they have been married for 9 years and she's happier than ever. The one is a redundant, dishonest concept sold to us by media. You don't find someone magically compatible with that'll be your true love for all eternity. You find someone you have an attraction to and common ground. You fight, you bicker, you set boundaries and you grow together and build your relationship until it is an insurmountable tower of positive memories and shared experience. You know what I, thankfully, learned early on? Love, to love someone, is relatively easy. To have a happy and healthy relationship through all the turmoil that is life, that's the hard part. If you let yourself you'll fall in love many, many times in your life and that love is not depreciated by the fact that it's been explored or shared. Love isn't finite it's a growth of affection and understanding connecting two people in delightful and slightly inconvenient ways. TL. DR. I shouldn't drink and comment on reddit. Oh and the idea of a one true love is naive. I'm 39 and turn 40 on the 9th. Never married and no kids. The job is great. I've been with Riot Games for 7 years. Just bought a second house. Adopted a cat 12 years ago who thinks he is a dog and is very awesome. 
He should have passed last year but got lucky with an early diagnosis. As you can tell given my single life he's more important than others may think appropriate. I fill my free time with exercise like running, the beach and biking, most importantly video games, which is as awesome as a 14 year old would expect it to be. With this much disposable income I play everything, volunteering in the big brother program. 6 years now, I appreciate this a lot. It's a strange kind of friendship but wholly rewarding. And I sit on the board of a non-profit here in LA helping the homeless. I use the work and volunteering to help forget how lonely I am. It works. I try various dating sites and date occasionally, still looking. There are two moments that I look back on and regret. One where I didn't let myself love and wished I had. And the other where I forgot who I was and was left. I'd recommend if you have someone you're not sure about move on. But if you have someone who stirs your emotions until they are scary, let go of fear right now and love. And I secretly covet caring for a dog. So get one of those two if you can. 40 pounds or bigger. Sorry Loki. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.